Our next guest says investors should avoid big tech and focus instead on international stocks. For more on the markets, let's bring in Jeff Klingelhofer, the co-head of investments and portfolio manager at Thornburg Investment Management, which has about $42 billion in assets under management. Jeff, great to have you with us. Um, we were just talking about yesterday's market action. What was so notable about that big gain in yesterday, that was on the back of a decline in Apple, a flat performance in Microsoft. So the big cap tech stocks continue to sort of sit on the sidelines here. Is that why you've got, gotten a little bit more cautious on this rally? I think a lot of things, right? We're watching the consumer weaken. We're watching really just the economic cycle play out almost exactly how you would expect it, just over a lengthened time frame. On the back of that, we've seen positive earnings thus far. We've been surprised at the resilience of companies' ability to pass through those increased prices to the end consumer and their ability to support them. But as stocks have rallied, we've pulled back a little bit as we still expect a recession in, in either the late part of this year or probably more likely the early part of 2024. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you saw the Moody's downgrade of U.S. banks this morning, and they highlighted sort of what the second quarter results showed in terms of the quality of the asset book they have, but also the headwinds that they could yeah. see even, even more with the commercial real estate portfolio, especially as we head into what they expect a mild recession in 2024. Do you agree with this call? Do you think that's a source of concern for these markets? I mean... I as always, it's a little bit on the, the late side, right? But we've, we've been watching this for quite some time. But it's 100% accurate in the sense that as the economy continues to shrink and everyone knows about this, the challenges within the commercial real estate side, it is going to be a challenge, especially for the smaller size banks. But on the flip side of that, what we've seen through this earnings season is as the consumer continues to hang in, many of the large banks are actually outperforming. Mm -hmm. Provisions for losses continue to, to be a little bit lower than we would have expected. And you're really setting a dichotomy up between the, the, the smaller banks within the U.S. versus the larger banks within the U.S. So we continue to focus on the more defensive sides of, of the banking sector and prefer to play the large money sector places. Do you think that the most of the troubles within the smaller to mid-sized cap banks, the ones that were really the focus of this downgrade, we've seen the worst of it? Or do you think that's another shoe to drop? I think there may be another shoe to drop just as we continue to see the, the realized challenges come into the CRE space. But I think many investors have already expected it. So maybe from a sentiment perspective, I would suggest that we're past the worst of it. From a downgrade perspective, it, there's probably a little bit more to come. So what triggers, um, the con what triggers the consumer to actually fall out of bed? I mean, we've seen the consumer hang in, hang in, hang in, even though inflation's high. Inflation's starting to roll over now. Um, so what is it at this point? I'd say it's not so much inflation. We have to look through that one level deeper, right? As we've seen the consumer, it's been incredibly, incredibly strong. One thing we're watching in particular is that roll rate from 30 days delinquent to 60 days delinquent. That's the transition from, gosh, I forgot to make a payment on my credit card to I can't make a payment on my credit card. So we're watching the latter half of this year. Again, companies have had an incredible resiliency, the ability to pass through those increased prices and the consumer's ability to continue to absorb those prices. But as student loan payments come on in the back half of this year, as well as uh, just general levels of employment fall, we're seeing companies pull back on their hiring plans. And that will feed through to the consumer much more than inflation has uh, year to date. We were chatting a little bit during the break, talking about how you, along with so many others, had come into the year much more pessimistic. Things actually turned out better. The consumer actually hung in, which is a huge force in the market as well. Um, are you worried that at this point, you know, you're getting more negative and, and that maybe things will actually hold on? Because, I mean, markets tend to have much more momentum, you know, when they're in this sort of phase, they play out, the, it's like a pendulum, right? It usually swings to the extreme. We may have more to go on this momentum here. We always could. That's absolutely true. And while we are turning a little bit more bearish, just broadly, as we see that playbook just play out, right? We're seeing banks broadly pull back on their lending. They're, we're seeing overall loans increase, particularly within the subprime consumer. We're seeing all of the signs that point to a recession. They're just playing out over a, sh a, a much longer time frame than we expected. But I'd say while we're bearish and we're cautious, there's still some pretty interesting things to do within these markets, right? You can look towards the international side mm -hmm. where valuations are much less expensive than they are here in the U.S., as well as focus on some more of the defensive areas within the U.S. broadly. Um, you like Yum China, which is a play on the Chinese consumer. And I'm wondering if you're concerned about the Chinese consumer because they're having trouble. Youth unemployment is at a record high. They're not getting the stimulus that so many people had expected. And, and that really gets to the Yum China consumer. I think that's exactly right. But we have to keep in mind this is a decades-long story. So the thesis for us has always been that Yum China has the ability to more than double its store count over the coming 10 or even 15 years. So yes, absolutely, we're watching that, that portion of the space, we're watching that consumer in particular, and they are challenged in today's environment. 
But looking over the longer term, we do expect additional stimulus. And much like the pendulum swings here in the U.S., the pendulum can absolutely swing within the, the Chinese space. Are you also looking at Chinese tech? Because those valuation, valuations are much lower than U.S. tech. They are. We, I would say, by and large, no. We're avoiding much of that space. But we are looking at global tech a little bit more than U.S. tech. Right? What we want to stay away from, in particular, is those AI stories. We view AI as more likely an evolution, not a step change. But there's a number of companies that benefit from broadly just the continued move within the chip space is one area that we like.